Good afternoon, everyone. I hope my audio is clear. Yes, um, so it is please. clear. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, given the historical record and the continuing pursuit of the country's uh, nuclear energy ambition and the uh, global developments on nuclear energy use, the PIDS was motivated to include uh, nuclear energy in its policy research agenda. And thus, a discussion paper on this topic, the implications of uh, pursuing a nuclear energy development program was produced. <clears throat> and I thank uh, Jokas Latigar for the initial assistance in the research and uh, Jetro Kamara for continuing the research assistance up to the present. My next slide, please. Let me first show you the international experience in uh, nuclear energy development. As you can see from the left-hand panel, figure one, nuclear power generation grew massively in the 1970s to 1980s. Then it slowed down in the latter part of the 1990s to the 2000s due to a number of factors, including the political turbulence in nuclear-powered countries, the stiffening of, a nucle of a regulatory regimes, uh, in part due to previous nuclear accidents like Chernobyl and uh, Three Mile incidents, <clears throat> the discovery of uh, more fossil fuel sources, and the rise of renewable energy technologies. Then uh, nuclear power generation suffered a sharp dip in 2011 after the Fukushima incident in Japan. But uh, recently, as uh, safety-related technologies improve, and as the recognition of the important role of nuclear energy in accelerating carbon emissions reduction grows, nuclear energy is seeing a resurgence. So on the right panel, figure two, you can see that uh, at present, 32 countries operate nuclear power plants with the US, China, and France having the largest uh, nuclear energy production. As of 2021, there are 431 operational nuclear power reactors in the world. Next slide, please. At the same time, we are seeing reactors being shut down. See the left-hand panel, figure three. Uh, because some are already aging, given that uh, most nuclear power plants have lifespans of between 20 to 40 years. The U.S. is leading in the decommissioning activities in terms of number of reactors. And uh, Germany is leading in terms of net electrical cap capacity withdrawn, given the permanent shutdown of its uh, nuclear power plants. But then nuclear reactor construction continues. See the right-hand panel, figure four. And as of 2022, there are 57 under construction reactors with a total net electrical capacity of uh, 58,858 megawatts. China's build-up is accelerating and its space in nuclear power development is leading globally. Its uh, nuclear power development is associated with a long-term plan for nuclear energy, long-term, no? and backed by five-year development plans no? from uh, socioeconomic development plan to sector-specific uh, plans, uh, uh, general energy sector up to uh, specific nuclear energy sector. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Let us look at interesting country-specific cases. There were phase outs then turn around in Germany, France, and uh, Japan. In Germany, the phase out has a long history because they have you know, a, a long history of anti-nuclear movements there. And then uh, uh, the phase out uh, was uh, put as a policy, but uh, it was delayed by the unprecedented energy crisis uh, caused by, the, um, by Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And then it's... Uh, resuming now. France legislated in 2015 a uh, nuclear energy share reduction, then backtrack in 2017 because uh, it would endanger the country's uh, security of supply. So on hold muna. Japan, after the Fukushima incident in 2011, switched off 50 reactors. But in 2014, uh, it started operating the reactors again. And now it's uh, building two additional reactors. Indonesia and Vietnam also have nuclear energy ambitions, but Indonesia, there were policy reversals. In 1997, they passed a nuclear energy law. In 2015, uh, plans were halted uh, in favor of renewable energy, and then 2021, reversal again, uh, given that uh, they announced that they will deploy nuclear power and their target is 2045. Vietnam, also has an ambition, but it abandoned its plan in 2016. 
because of low demand. But now their experts are saying that uh, it's still an option given uh, the increasing uh, power demand. Bangladesh, a country that is poorer than us, is recently making progress in nuclear energy development. So you plan for them, uh, their, their plan uh, was crafted even prior to independence of Bangladesh that was in 1961. And then it was revived after independence in 1974. The International Atomic uh, Energy Agency or IAEA rendered technical assistance to them in 2011. And they, they started uh, constructing the first reactor in 2017. And that might be operational by 2020. 23 this year or next year 2024 and their second reactor started construction in 2018 and it was reported that it might be operational uh, next year or 2025 the next slide please so you see the interest in nuclear energy internationally remains but so does the criticisms against it here I am showing you just a few of the points uh, being raised in the continuing debate on the pros and cons of uh, nuclear energy. The primary advantage being mentioned by proponents is uh, reliability of nuclear power because plants can run 24 hours a day and need to refuel only every 1.5 to 2 years. And even though the initial capital cost is high, operating the power plants uh, cost relatively low. Another advantage that is growing in recognition is the role of nuclear energy in quickly achieving climate targets, given that um, nuclear power plants have uh, zero carbon emissions. But uh, issues such as safety, economics at the project level, that is, radioactive waste disposal, and uh, nuclear weapons proliferation remain. Then there are also the hidden subsidies that are usually given in many stages of the nuclear uh, fuel cycle. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> and we see from our history that the Philippines is not letting go of its nuclear energy ambition. And that is why we need to seriously consider the implications. But let me first trace the history of exploring this option for the Philippines. In 1958, former President uh, Carlos Garcia introduced the possibility of uh, utilizing nuclear energy in the Philippines through the creation of the Philippine Atomic Energy Commission by virtue of Republic Act 2067. And uh, in 19, the 1960s, the first nuclear reactor for research purposes was built. In the 1970s, the global oil crisis hit and the Philippines was then importing 93% of its oil requirement. In reaction, in 1973, former President Ferdinand Marcos announced that a nuclear power, power plant will be built to reduce the country's dependence on imported oil. From 1976 to 1984, the Bataan Nuclear Power Plant, or BNPP, was constructed. In 1986, the Aquino cabinet voted to mothball the plant due to safety concerns, including conflicting reports of uh, two IAEA groups or technical teams from the international uh, regulator. And consequently, former President Aquino carried out what the cabinet voted on. Then there were attempts to get the BNPP operational and then uh, the current compromise agreement, but then it failed during the Ramos administration. But during the Ramos administration also, in 1998, the Philippine Energy Plan incorporated nuclear power plant as a long-term option. So it's still there with 2020, it was still there with 2025 as target operation year of the first power plant. Next slide. Continuing our tracking of the history. <clears throat> In 2008, the Arroyo administration sought for a mission review by the IAEA and commissioned the Korea Electric Power Corporation or KEPCO to conduct a feasibility study on the possible rehabilitation of the BNPP. In 2010, KEPCO concluded that the BNPP rehabilitation can be done at a cost of, of uh, one, uh, 1 billion uh, US dollars. In 2011, during the administration of President Noy Noy Aquino, the Fukushima incident happened, sparking renewed fears about the safety of nuclear power plants. Still, uh, during former President Noy Noy Aquino's term in 2015, in the preparation of the long-term vision Ambition Nat in 2040, the inclusion of nuclear energy in the re regeneration mix is among the recommendations. 
Then during the administration of President Duterte, the government collaborated with the IAEA for review missions on the prospect of developing a nuclear energy program. So you can see that uh, it continues to be in our uh, energy development agenda. Next slide, please. So let's zero in for a while on the BNPP case. As I mentioned previously, there were two conflicting IAEA reports then. And then the Chernobyl 1986 accident uh, fueled the fears on safety and the decision to mothball the plant was carried out. But when economic reality set in, a compromise to address the safety issues and uh, operate the plant was reached. Then the Ramos administration decided to renegotiate for better terms. Then negotiations broke down and legal actions ensued. Unfortunately, the Philippines lost in the legal case. At present, the Napo Corps continues to maintain the BNPP, but interest to rehabilitate and operate it remains. And uh, under the Duterte administration, there were suggestions that uh, operating it would cost between uh, $3 billion to $4 billion uh, US dollars. Okay, next slide, please. <clears throat> so our nuclear energy ambition remains. But uh, what exactly would it entail? What do we need to prepare for? The uh, schematic diagram in this slide provides a snapshot of what uh, any country attempting to build its nuclear power plant or revive, uh, you know, attempting to revive its nuclear power plant uh, uh, program after years of neglect. Because there, there are countries uh, uh, which uh, are in that stage. So the the uh, what they need to follow is this, the milestones approach prescribed by the IAEA. First and foremost, the country must uh, articulate in its national energy strategy that it has included nuclear power among the options for energy generation. So it's something that's articulated uh, in, in our um, uh, vision document and also in our plan documents. Then the country undergoes three phases in developing the necessary infrastructure. And at the end of each phase, a milestone must be reached before embarking on the next phase. In phase one, there are considerations, actually 19, 19 infrastructure considerations, which I will discuss later. Um, in phase two, there are preparatory activities for contracting and construction. And in phase three, there are safety and preparation activities for commissioning. So it's um, estimated that uh, uh, 10 to 15 years are required uh, for a country to undergo uh, those uh, stages. And um, note that uh, the same milestones approach will have, will have to be followed under the um, small modular reactor technology option. But there are also experts saying that the process might be uh, cut short if the option that's uh, being uh, followed is deployment of uh, small modular reactors. But this SMR technology is uh, still developing. At present, there is no uh, commercially scalable um, reactor yet. So there are prototypes and uh, uh, regulatory approvals uh, have already been issued, but uh, no commercial scale um, unit has been produced yet. Okay, next slide. <clears throat> the IAEA highlights um, that 19, in phase one palang tayo ha, 19 infrastructure issues must be fully considered during phase one. So that's where we are now under phase one. And that uh, the comprehensive report uh, produced at the end of uh, this phase one must show how all those issues are addressed. Uh, note that the order of presentation of the 19 infrastructure issues does not imply ranking of importance. Those need to be simultaneously uh, addressed. No? So the 19 infrastructure issues are national position, nuclear safety, management, funding and financing, legal framework, safeguards, radiation protection, regulatory framework, electrical grid, human resource development, stakeholder involvement, site and supporting facilities, environmental protection, emergency planning, nuclear security, nuclear fuel cycle, radioactive waste management, 
industrial development and procurement. So note, no, even as early as phase one, we must already address uh, uh, security, fuel cycle, uh, waste management, those uh, kinds of issues. Okay, next slide. But um, <clears throat> our progress in addressing the 19 infrastructure issues had been slow. In 2018, a mission by the IAA uh, called Phase One Integrated Nuclear Infrastructure Review or INIR mission was conducted and it yielded recommendations. On national position, the recommendation was to expand the country's implementing or coordinating organization for the nuclear energy program called the NEPIO. So far, this is what has been achieved, plus the issuance of a national position that uh, the Philippines would uh, pursue a nuclear energy program issued before former President Duterte stepped down. On nuclear safety, the NEPIO is encouraged to develop a program for this. On management, the NEPIO is also encouraged to implement a leadership program. On funding and financing, the NEPIO is urged to review the various financing options and identify needed changes in the current legal framework. Next slide, please. On legal framework, the Philippines should complete an analysis of laws affecting the nuclear program and plan for enactment or amendment of a needed laws. It should also complete the ratification of certain international agreements. I'll uh, enumerate those later. On a regulatory framework, the NEPIO is supposed to propose a structure and staffing requirements of the future regulatory body. On radiation protection, there should also be a program for this. The, the same for electrical grid. A program is needed, beginning with a grid system study on reliability and compatibility. On human resource development, a program is also needed. Okay, next slide. On um, stakeholder involvement, further outreach to the public is needed. No? And uh, that uh, is really necessary if we are to base on, uh, we, we are to base the, the public's perception on the uh, question of Sheila earlier, no? yung result the word cloud. On emergency planning, there should also be a program for this. And there is a need to ensure consistency with preparedness and response plans. On nuclear security, there should be national coordination mechanisms. On fuel cycle, options should be assessed for the supply of fuel and management of spent fuel. On waste management, there should be preliminary evaluation of options. On industrial involvement, Local industries and technology providers must be involved and a national policy for this must be developed. Okay, next slide, please. So you've seen from our previous discussions that uh, our progress is slow. It is only the setting up of a um, national coordination and implementation agency and the issuance of a national position that were accomplished. No? So yung two items na yun lang. And we still need a lot to hurdle if the Philippines is to seriously pursue its uh, nuclear energy ambition. The study then concludes with the following recommendations. Nuclear energy remains a promising option for the Philippines. Should the Philippines commit to a nuclear energy program, it must be prepared for a commitment of uh, almost 100 years from preparation to decommissioning and ensuring long-term safety after decommissioning. And the Philippines must consistently follow the IEA's uh, milestone approach and for every go government administration to be consistent in seeking progress through this approach. The positive national position adopted by the Duterte, admin Duterte administration may have to be confirmed and reinforced by the Marcos Jr. administration by issuing a fresh mandate to the Nuclear Energy Program Interagency Committee or NEPIAC and uh, setting new targets and timetable for the phase one requirements. The Philippines also needs to ratify specific international legal instruments that it's signed in the, pa in the past. So what are these? The 1994 Convention on Nuclear Safety, 1998 Joint Convention on the Safety of uh, Spent Fuel Management and Safety of Radioactive Waste Management, 1998 Protocol to Amend the Vienna Convention on Civil Liability, 1998 Convention on Supplementary Compensation, and 1998 Joint Protocol relating to the application of the Vienna Convention and Paris Convention. 
The existing legal framework in the Philippines for nuclear energy development and regulation also needs to be updated. Kasi the two main laws on nuclear energy, RA-2067, enacted in 1958, and RA-5207, enacted in 1968, are outdated. On the BNPP, the decision whether to rehabilitate it must be guided by project and economics. Aside from the huge cost, the biggest hurdle is the fact that the government is no longer allowed under the EPIRA to engage in power generation except for missionary electrification. And finally, the prospects for nuclear energy development in the Philippines must not only be well argued before policymakers, but be convincingly communicated as well to the general public. Thank you for your attention and good afternoon once again.